So we're going to be talking now about the um, control of olefins, turbines, and specifically about the steam systems. So let's start with the way uh, an olefins plant makes olefins. They have a cracking furnace that takes in a, um, a paraffinic feed and heats the heck out of it, gets it really, really hot and uh, by running it up through a bunch of tubes inside the furnace. Um, the fire usually comes from crack, uh, from methane, a, a tail gas in the process. The product that comes out of the, uh, the furnace after it's cracked is uh, olefins like ethylene, propylene, butadiene, and then some leftover stuff like hydrogen from uh, what's cracked off of the paraffins, uh, some H2S, heavier stuff. So olefins are created by exposing the feed to very high temperatures. Now, when that happens, uh, you want to stop the, the cracking action by uh, cooling down the feed after it comes out. So you, you want to stop the reaction as quickly as you can. Otherwise, you'll wind up with uh, some undesirable uh, components um, So let's take a look closer at our uh, furnace here. So what comes out of the furnace, we said, is really hot. So the way you uh, stop that reaction is by cooling it in something called a quench exchanger. So um, the hot gas passes through one side of the uh, exchanger, and, um, and what's left is cooled down, goes through some more separation process, and winds up in the section of the crack gas compressor. Uh, the other side of the exchanger is, is uh, boiler feed water that's flashed off by the heat to create steam. So you quench the, the reaction by uh, generating steam um, that uh, passes through the, uh, the boiler tubes. Now, when it comes out of the exchanger, it goes into a steam drum like you might have on a, a boiler. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, you have to go through a superheater. So after the, um, the steam drum, there's a superheater also uh, heated by the, uh, the hot product. So uh, what comes out of the superheater is going to be very hot high pressure steam, generally around 100 bar steam. All the steam that's produced by the uh, quench exchanger has to be consumed by the, um, the super high pressure header. There's no place else f for it to go. The steam is produced uh, by controlling the reaction. So the steam system is not responding to uh, the steam system demands. It's the controls of it are responding to what the process needs are. So we're, uh, the reaction is what's controlling uh, how much steam is made. So let's take a look at what our steam system looks like. So we'll draw that superheater, I mean the quench exchanger just as a simple box. Out of that box comes the uh, super high pressure uh, steam. Now on that header will be some kind of a pressure reducing valve to dump off excess uh, steam if, if uh, the turbine can't handle it. But most of the steam, if not all, is going to go through V1 of the crack gas compressor. So that'll be a, a two section extraction turbine um, with V1 handling uh, the 100 bar steam and then extracting steam to uh, the high pressure header which is usually around 40 bar. Then steam, some more steam goes through V2 to uh, manage the horsepower of the turbine. Uh, another turbine will probably be on that high pressure header, usually the uh, propylene refrigeration compressor and also the ethylene. The propylene machine might be an extraction uh, turbine as well um, with its uh, extraction going to the medium pressure header. Now additionally on the high pressure header there will probably be a fired boiler to supplement the steam for that header. The PRV from the SHP header will go into that MP he uh, HP header as well. So looking up at our uh, two-valve algorithm, it's going to take a pressure demand 
from a pressure controller on the SHP header and a speed demand from a speed controller that's watching the turbine speed. So the output of that two valve will send an output to the f to control V1 and another output to control V2. The super high pressure uh, steam pressure must be held steady in order to pre prevent upsets to the quen quench exchange or steam drum. Uh, you don't want high levels, low levels, um, so you have to manage that by keeping that pressure constant. So the pressure controller for the SHP header will send a demand to the two valve algorithm to adjust the flow um, of the crack gas compressor steam turbine inlet uh, in response to a steam header pressure change. Also the, uh, the speed controller of the uh, crack gas compressor um, will send a demand to the two valve algorithm to adjust the power of the turbine if the speed of uh, the turbine changes. So th the challenge for the two valve algorithm um, is going to be uh, keeping the power from changing if V1 moves. So if you move V1 in response to a change in the uh, SHP header pressure, uh, that's going to change the power produced by the turbine. So um, since the power and flow char characteristics of the turbine are modeled in the two-valve algorithm, it's going to know um, that uh, just how much the power is going to change based on any change in V1. So um, that means the V2 position can be adjusted uh, by uh, an exact amount that will offset the, uh, the change that took place at V1. So let's look at that steam system again one more time. So what we're saying then is the pressure controller that's managing the uh, SHP header pressure is, is going to manage V1 and the speed controller is going to manage V2. So what does that leave for the header pressure? I mean the uh, extraction pressure uh, or any control of that. It means that the HP header uh, pressure has got to be controlled by some other device. We've got two valves on the CGC turbine. They're already busy doing something else. The HP header uh, could be controlled by the, the PRC turbine uh, V1, similar to what we do with the CGC, but the steam is needed for startup because um, you won't have, there won't be any steam up prior to starting up the furnaces because until you have feed going through the furnace, you won't have any heat at the quench exchanger to produce the, the steam that uh, supplies the, the SHP header. So, uh, you need some kind of steam to get the turbines running prior to starting the furnaces. In this case, we show a fired boiler connected to the HP header that will provide that startup steam. And then once you're running and making product, you don't need that much steam from the fired heater, but it can be used as a, uh, a compensation for any swings in that HP header pressure. So since the... Uh, CGC turbine is not controlling its uh, extraction header and you've got a, a bunch of other users on that header pulling steam out of it, you need uh, something to supplement the steam if they're not in balance and that's what you would get from the, uh, from the fired heater. It's, um, it's just a matter of balance. So in this case uh, there's no way for the CGC turbine to to make any uh, control action that's going to keep the HP header uh, within any kind of limits. It has two valves that can control two variables. One's going to be the SHP header pressure, the other one's going to be the speed. Something else has to manage the HP header pressure and probably in a process like this it's going to be done by some kind of a, a fired boiler connected to the HP header.